Hello everyone, welcome back to the course Expansive Soil. Today I will start a new module, this will be the module 8 and the title of this module will be the application of Expansive Soil. This module will have two lectures, the first one will be the foundation on Expansive Soil and the second one will be the application of Expansive Soil for various geotechnical engineering and this will be the lecture number 23rd. So, when we design for a foundation then we need to take care of two things, the depth of the expansive soil, particularly designing the foundation in an expansive soil is quite bit tricky. So, here when we design we need to take care of the zone for which there will be an ex expansiveness of the soil occurs. If you could recall in the earlier classes I have explained about the depth of the expansive behavior zone. So, that is known as the active zone. If you see the change in the water content profile along with the depth, we could see that with increase in the depth from the ground surface, the water content profile will vary. And depending on the season, particularly for wet season or dry season, this profile will be different. So, when you look into the pro water content profile of soil with depth, the water content profile will vary. Mostly it at uh, ground surface it will be quite uh, low during dry season. Similarly, during the wet season it will be quite high, but with increase in the depth the water content will keep on changing. But after reaching a certain value the water content will not change. If we compare the water content profile for dry season and wet season, we could see the variation in the water content with depth is quite different. But once we reach to a certain level up to here, there will be no much variation in the water content with depth occur. So, this zone is known as active zone. And if an expansive soil present over here, then the expansiveness of the soil will occur only during this portion. If you could recall, I told you that the expansive behavior of the soil will be a problem when there will be change in the water content. So, in this case there will be no change in the water content, therefore, there will be no effect of expansive soil behavior on this soil. But if we look into, if we go above this, above this line or in between the ground surface and active zone, the expansive soil will create a problem in the active zone only. So, therefore, when you design a foundation, we need to first determine what will be the active zone and we also say this one as an unstable zone. So, first point while designing a foundation in an expansive soil will be to determine what will be the active zone or what will be the unstable zone. Then the zone below this one is known as stable zone because the water content will remain constant. So, there will be no variation of expansive soil or no effect of expansive soil on foundation at this zone will occur. So, therefore, the first point in designing a foundation in an expansive soil to determine the unstable zone or the active zone. When we design a foundation on an expansive soil, we need to take care of the following things. First, the, we need to increase the structural load to counterbalance the swelling pressure, then to reduce the heap of expansive soil and third to provide the foundation to a deeper stable soil. As long as possible we should try to avoid constructing a foundation on an expansive soil, but all the time we cannot avoid. So, if we we have to design a foundation then we have to take care of these three things that is to increase the structural load so that the swelling pressure will be counterbalanced. If we design a foundation the swelling pressure will try to push this foundation in upward direction or try to push the structure in the upward direction. So, if we provide a load which we can counterbalance this swelling pressure then the effect of the swelling will not be significant. Then to reduce the expansive behavior of the soil, so we can do that with uh, different techniques which we have learned in the previous classes like soil treatment methods like uh, lime stabilization, cement stabilization or mechanical methods. So, these are the different methods by which we can reduce the expansive behavior of the soil or 
we can do one thing we can go for a foundation to a deeper stable soil. So, if this is an soil profile and this is the active zone, then the foundation should be extended beyond this active zone or unstable zone and the foundation should be located at stable zone. So, that the effect of expansiveness of the soil will have no bearing on the foundation. So, when we design a foundation or when we take a foundation particularly say for example, a deep foundation like a pile foundation, there will be some uplifting force as well as there will be some resisting force. Say for example, if we take a pile foundation like this, suppose this is the active zone or unstable zone, this is the stable zone. That means, the soil in this zone will only be experience some swelling characteristics. Let this length be L1 and let this length be L2. Now, when we calculate the uplift force on this foundation due to the swelling behavior of the soil, the soil will try to push this pile in the upward direction. So, this will be the uplifting force. If you look into this diagram, this will be the uplifting force and this will only act in this zone that is the active zone. So, this uplift force depends on the pile diameter, it depends on the length of the pile. Suppose, if this is L1, this is L1 and let this pile diameter is D, then it depends on the pile diameter, it depends on the length of the pile, it depends on the cohesion under undrained condition that is Cu and also it depends on the coefficient of uplift between the concrete and the soil. That means, the force of addition between the soil and the concrete at the point of contact between the soil and concrete. So, generally this can be taken as 0 0.15 depending on the soil and the material of this pile. So, the uplifting force will be Q u p will be equals to pi d alpha u into C u into L 1 and the resisting force will come from this stable zone. That means, if we look into the stable zone here, the resistance against the uplifting will be provided by the shaft friction in the stable zone. So, the resisting force Q r 1 in the stable zone will be equals to pi d into alpha into C u into L 2, where d is the diameter of the pile shaft, alpha is the addition factor under compression loading and C u is the cohesion under undrained condition and L 2 is the length of pile in the stable zone. So, this is the L 2. So, this is the case when we use a slender pile or pile like this one without any bell. But sometimes or in many cases for an expansive soil, we need to use the belt pile or the bulb piles. In belt piles, we provide bells like this one. You can have one bell or two bells depending on the soil and as, as also depending on the de design load. So, let in this case, we are providing a single belt to this belt piles or single bulb to this belt piles. Now, when we see this uh, uplifting force as well as the resisting force, the uplift force again will come because of the upliftment or uplifting force caused due to the swelling of the soil in this zone. That will be equals to Q u p will be equals to pi d alpha u C u into L 1. This resisting force will be made of two components. One will be Q r 1 that will be because of the friction between the pile length of L 2 and the second will be coming because of this bearing over here at this point. So, the resisting force Q r will be equals to Q r 1 plus Q r 2 for this case, where Q r 1 will be equals to pi d alpha into C u into L 2. Now, when you calculate the Q r 2, 
this resisting force which comes because of the, the bearing of pile bulb on the soil at this point. We need to calculate the annular area that means the area between the pile bulb and the outer layer of the pile shaft that is the annular area. So, this annular area will be equals to pi by 4 into db suppose if db is the diameter of the bulb db minus d square where d is the diameter of this pile shaft and that will be multiply with c n c into gamma l 2 where c is the cohesion of the soil at the bulb of the pile and n c is the bearing capacity factor and gamma is the unit weight of the soil l 2 is the length of the soil. Now, depending on the ratio l 2 by d b the value of n c can change. Say for example, when this ratio is equals to 1.7 the n c value will be equals to 4. When the ratio is equals to 2.5 it will be equals to 6 and when it will be greater than 5 then the value will be 9. So, depending on the values of the ratio between L2 by dB, the values of NC will change and then the total uplift force will be equals to the resisting force for a stable foundation. So, these are the different forces which acts on a pile foundation when if the pile is located in an expansive soil. So, when we design a foundation in an expansive soil, there are few methods by which we can design it. The first one is the increasing the load of the structure. So, as I told you if this is a foundation, the foundation will be subjected to an uplift pressure because of the swelling of the soil. So, this is the frictional resistance. In this case the pile is located in an unstable zone that is the active zone. If it is located in the stable zone then q b will not be there only the frictional resistance will act. So, to counter react this uh, frictional force arises due to the swelling of the soil we need to increase the load of the footing or we need to increase the load of the structure which comes to the footing. But to do this we need to have a larger structure which may not be economical. So, therefore, this method is not economical. So, in this method we need to increase the load of the structure to counterbalance the swelling pressure of the soil, but this is not an economical method. In the second option we need to reduce the heap of the expansive soil. Suppose in this case a foundation is located in an expansive soil. So, in this case we need to reduce the expansiveness behavior of the soil located here. Say in this case what we can do is there are different way by which we can achieve this. First option is by providing a foundation surrounded with granular fill. So, in this case what we have to do is we need to excavate a trench and we need to excavate the trench up to 20 to 30 centimeter below the base of the footing. So, we need to extra excavate the soil which will be more than 20 to 30 centimeter below the depth of the foundation layer. Then in this zone we need to provide some drainage material which will be made of sand and gravel. So, this mixture of sand and gravel or the granular fill will be provided here. Now, once we provide this granular fill then we need to construct the RCC foundation and then we need to construct the foundation over here and we need to keep some space air gap here to allow the soil to swell if there is a swelling occurs. So, in this method the excavation will be carried out up to a depth of 20 to 30 centimeter below the foundation level. The drainage material such as mixture of sand and gravel will be provided at the bottom level. Then RCC foundation will be constructed over this granular fill. This granular material will act as a cushion layer to absorb the swelling of the soil. So, whenever the swelling occurs 
that swelling will be taken care of by this granular material. So therefore, the amount of effect of swelling on this foundation will be minimal. But this type of foundation need to be constructed in dry season when the soil has shrunk to its lowest level. And also this kind of foundation is generally applicable for the soil with low to medium level of expansiveness or soil exhibiting a low to medium level of expansive characteristics. The second option by treating the soil. So, there are various methods by which we can reduce the swelling capacity of the soil like uh, adding lime or cement or bitumen or flash. So, by adding those materials, we can reduce the expansiveness behavior of the soil. So, if we encounter any kind of expansive soil, then first the soil need to be treated using this method. Once the soil is stabilized, then the soil will be compacted and then the foundation will be laid over this soil. Generally, this kind of uh, treatment is carried out to low to medium level of swelling of the soil. So, next method is the CNS technology, which is quite widely used in India and also around the world. In this method, a layer of cohesive non-swelling soil known as CNS of sufficient depth is provided over the expansive soil. So, suppose if this is an expansive soil layer, a layer of CNS soil of sufficient depth will be provided over this expansive soil. Then the self weight of this layer will counter react the swelling pressure of the soil. And higher is the expansiveness of the soil, the higher will be the thickness of this CNS layer. So, depending on the expansive or swelling pressure of this soil, the thickness of this CNS layer will be different. As far as Indian standard is concerned, if the swelling pressure is in between 50 to 150 kilo Newton per meter square, the thickness of the CNS layer will be like 75 to 85 centimeter. If the swelling pressure is between 200 to 300, it will be like 90 to 100 centimeter. If it is between 350 to 500 kilo Newton per meter square, it will be 105 to 125 centimeter. So, this is quite ideally used and again this can be used for many application, mostly the structure loaded with light load. The other method which is most widely used for highly loaded structure is to provide a foundation to deeper stable soil. The deeper stable soil means as I told you there are two zones exist, one is active zone, the zone in which there will be a fluctuation in the water content with depth during wet and summer season. So, there will be a problem to the expansive soil behavior only at this zone. So, that is why this is known as unstable zone and below that active zone there will be stable zone the soil at this zone will mostly be stable, it will not go any expansive or shrinkage due to wetting or drying of the soil. So, when the soil is in top unstable zone, it will absorb moisture and the soil will expand. Due to this heaving effect, an upward force will act which will push the shaft in the upward direction. So, that will be the uplifting force. This upward force will try to pull this pile out of its position. So, this uplift force will try to push this pile in the upward direction. Now, this uplifting force will be resisted by the downward load Q and also the resisting force provided by the friction between the pile and the soil in the stable zone that is Q R 1 and also the bearing between the soil and the bulb diameter that is Q R 2 as I explained earlier. Let us consider a pile of length L1 plus L2 plus L3. Out of this length, L1 length is located in unstable zone, L2 is the length of the soil which is located in the stable zone between the bulb and the stable zone that is L2 and L3 is the length of the soil or length of the bulb in the stable zone. So, L1, L2 and L3. Now, the uplifting force which is being acting on the pile Q U P will be equals to pi D L 1 into C A, where C A is the unit addition between the soil and shaft. So, this 
adhesion between the soil and shaft will try to push this in the upward direction. So, that is why we need to take CA. The different code says provided different CA value depending on the soil type and depending on the material which is used in the pile. Then comes the total resisting force QR1 which will be made of resisting force caused by the skin friction on the shaft of length L2 which will be QR1 plus the reaction provided by the soil bulb within the annular surface AR. So, this is the annular surface AR. The annular area AR will be equals to pi by 4 into dB square minus d square. So, if we take this total area and if we subtract this area then we will get the annular area this. So, that will be pi by 4 into dB square minus d square. Then QR1 will be equals to pi d into L2 into CA. This is QR1 and QR2 will be equals to QD into pi by 4 into dB square minus d square. Now, this QD will comes from the bearing capacity equation. QD will be equals to let us it will be CB into NC. As I told you the values of CB depends on L2 by dB. Let us assume this CB is equals to 9, where CB is the cohesion of the soil at the bulb level. So, the cohesion of the soil at this level is the CB. So, once we know this CB value L1, L2 and DUD, we can find out what will be the total uplifting force, what will be total resisting force and then we can calculate the stability of the pile. Let us consider two scenario. In the first case, we will not take the weight Q and we will use a factor of safety 1.2. You can take any factor of safety. In this case, let us it be 1.2. So, factor of safety 1.2 will be equals to the resisting force divided by Q U P. So, factor of safety will be equals to Q R by Q U P which will be equals to 1.2. So, Q U P will be equals to Q R divided by 1.2. The resisting force has two components Q R 1 and Q R 2. So, therefore, Q R will be equals to Q R 1 plus Q R 2. So, Q U P will becomes equals to Q R 1 plus Q R 2 divided by 1.2. Now, we will replace Q U P by pi d L 1 into C A and Q R 1 by pi d into L 2 into C A and Q R 2 by 9 into C B pi by 4 d B square minus d square then divided by 1.2. Let it be equation number 1. Now, consider the top pile load Q with a factor of safety 2. Now, factor of safety will be equals to Q R minus Q U P minus Q. So, Q R divided by Q U P minus Q will be equals to 2 or Q U P minus Q will be equals to Q R by 2 and again Q R is made of two components Q R 1, Q R 2. So, this will be equals to Q R 1 plus Q R 2 by 2. Now, again if you replace Q U P and Q R 1, Q R 2 then we will get this equation pi d into L 1 into C A minus Q will be equals to pi d into L 2 into C A plus 9 C B into pi by 4 d B square minus d square whole divided by 2, where C A is the addition between the shaft and the soil, C B is the cohesion of the soil at the bulb. Now, we will replace the value of L 1 from equation 1. So, when we replace the, the value of L 1 from equation 1, we will get Q plus 1 half into pi d L 2 into C A plus 9 C B into pi by 4 into d B square minus d square will be equals to 1 by 1.2 pi d into L 2 into C A plus 9 C B into pi by 4 into d B square minus d square. Here we are replacing the values of this one over there. So, here we know the Q load, we know the d L 2. So, accordingly we can design the pile. So, for any factor of safety, we can see whether the pile foundation is safe or not or if we know the Q values, we can calculate 
or we can design the pile by choosing different L2, L1 and D and DB. So, this way we can design a pile for a deep foundation. There is another method by which we can provide a pile foundation in an expansive soil. In this case what we will do is, we will first drill an oversized hole into the ground and then we will put the pile and the area between the pile and the cut will be filled with non-expansive particularly soft compressible soil or material, straw or sawdust can be used as a filler material. So, in this method an oversized pile hole will be drilled, the space between the pile and the soil will be filled with soft and compressible material to reducing the uplifting pressure. So, here this material will act as a cushion between the soil and the pile. So, therefore, the uplifting pressure will get reduced. So, this method will then reduce the uplifting pressure. But one of the demerits of this method is, this method will reduce the total load bearing capacity as some of the portion of the soil will be resisting this upward uplift pressure by providing a frictional resistance. But when we provide a soft material over here, then the frictional resistance which will be opposing this uplift pressure will also get reduced. So, because of that the total load bearing capacity of the pile will be reduced. And this is most commonly used when upper expansive layer of the soil is underlain by a non-expansive soil. And also this is applicable for a low to medium swelling soil. When we design a pile, we do some common error which we should avoid. First one is we go for an excessive pile diameter. As I told you one of the method of counterbalance the swelling pressure is to increase the load. So, in that case what we do is we increase the diameter to get the enough dead load to counter react the swelling pressure, but this is not all the time economical. Instead of that we should go for a longer pile of small diameter because if we go for a shorter pile with larger diameter the uplifting pressure will be more as the surface area of the pile will be more and also if the pile is of short length then the uplifting pressure will also be acting at the bottom of the footing. The next is insufficient pile length. The possibility of a pile to remain in the unstable zone will remain high if the length of the pile is kept short. If we take a soil and if this is a unstable zone and this is a stable zone, if we keep the pile of short length then the entire length of the pile will remain in unstable zone. So, now this pile will be subjected to the uplift pressure from the side as well as from the bottom. So, therefore, we have to be sure that the pile of sufficient length should be provided and pile should go into the stable zone as well. The other common error what we do is by providing a non-uniform pile diameter. Sometimes uh, during the construction extra concrete materials we just pour. So, this extra concrete material can act as a part of pile and if the soil is an expansive type then there will be an uplifting pressure acting over this extra pile area or extra portion of the pile. So, this uplifting pressure will generate additional uplifting pressure on the pile. Similarly, if we design a pile of this shape, then also there will be an uplifting pressure acting on the surface of the pile. So, therefore, the pile should be of uniform diameter and we need to avoid the presence of this mushroom type of structures on the side of pile. Sometimes we need to provide a shallow foundation to an expansive soil, but we need to remember that the shallow foundation should not be used in expansive soil except when the soil is of low expansion type or when the soil will have a low expansion potential. But when we provide a shallow foundation to an expansive soil, we need to take care of three design criteria. The first one is the structure should be designed to be stiff enough to provide rigidity in case of heaving. 
that means the structure should be stiff enough so that in case of a heaving then it should not get cracked. Then the second one is the foundation to be designed to isolate the structure from the expansive soil and the third is the soil should be stabilized to produce the less expansion. So, we need to take care of these three things while designing a shallow foundation in an expansive soil. A stiffened mat foundation or reinforced slab on grade foundations are primarily used to provide rigidity to withstand expansive soil heave. And a deep foundation system is used primarily to isolate the structure from the expansive soil. If we are providing a shallow foundation to an expansive soil, then we need to take care of this standard procedure. The first one is the soil has to be stabilized by going for any improvement methods as I discussed in the previous classes we need to compact the soil on the wet side of the ONC. If we look into the dry density and water content curve, this part is known as dry of OMC, this part is known as wet of OMC. And if we compact the soil on the dry of OMC, the soil will exhibit a higher swelling characteristics. If we compact the soil on the wet of OMC, the swelling tendency of the soil will decrease. So, therefore, we need to compact the soil on the wet side of the OMC. Then control the expansion, for example, allow the soil to expand in the cavities of the footing or structure. Say, for example, if we provide a footing with this kind of cavity like this, then the soil will expand to this cavities. Therefore, the expansion will be only limited to this cavity portion and it will not increase or lift the structure. All this expansion behavior of the soil will be arrested within this cavity. So, the other method is control the expansion that means allowing the soil to expand in the cavities. Control the soil water. The main problem with the expansiveness behavior is the water. If there is a source of water or if the water is getting ingressed into the soil, then the soil expansive characteristic will increase or the soil will expand. If we isolate the structure such that the water cannot ingress or cannot enter into the soil, then the swelling of this soil can be controlled. So, therefore, we can control the movement of the water into this layer located below the foundation or providing a granular blanket of 0 0.3 to 1 meter to control the capillary water or loading the structure to a sufficient load to counter the swelling pressure and providing vertical and horizontal barriers. So, this vertical and horizontal barriers can prevent the ingress of the water into the soil just below the foundation. So, these are the different standard procedures for shallow foundation providing in an expansive soil. There are different types of foundation which we can provide is a shallow foundation in an expansive soil. So, these are the continuous footing. In continuous footing also we can provide voids as I discussed in the previous slide. If we provide the voids, then the expansiveness behavior of the soil will get only to this or will occur only on this cavity portion. So, therefore, there will be no more impact or not much impact of expansive behavior on this footing. We can go with the isolated pad, we need to provide different pads which is located at sufficient distance apart such that the effect of the swelling on this structure will be minimum or we can go with the reinforced mat. In the continuous footing, this is most commonly used for light loaded structure and cannot be used for a high expansive soil. So, only applicable for soil with which has a medium to low value of expansiveness and it can be used with the swelling potential less than 1 percent or the swelling pressure less than 3000 PSF. So, only for this kind of soil continuous footing can be applied and also in order to apply a higher trade pressure on the expansive soil, we need to reduce the thickness of this footing that is we need to reduce this thickness such that the pressure exerted by the foundation on the soil will be more as the pressure is equals to F by A that means the pressure is inversely proportional to A. So, if we reduce the A then it will exert a higher pressure on the soil 
or it will exert a higher pressure to counter react the swelling pressure. Next is the pad foundation. So, in pad foundation, so this is the pad foundation, this is isolated pads. In the pad foundation, it will be consisting of series of individual footing pads placed on the upper soil and spanned by grade beams and it can be provided where the soil poses moderate swell potential and have a high bearing capacity. And also the individual pads should be sufficiently exert a pressure higher than the swelling pressure of the soil. So, in this case we can provide the pad foundation and also the pressure coming from this pad will be more than the swelling pressure of the soil and this pad should be located to a far distance so that the effect will be minimum. Another type of footing we can provide is waffle slab. This is the type of waffle slab mostly it is provided at a shallow depth or mostly on the ground surface as well. It, this is also known as a ribbed slab foundation and it is a structure if we look in from the top it will be a planar structure but if we look from the bottom it will have number of voids like this. So, these are the voids. So, a waffle slab foundation also known as ribbed slab foundation is a structure that is plain at the top and has a grid like system at the bottom. So, this grid like system are known as the ribs. Here we can see this is the waffle slab and this is the voids. So, this is known as ribs. This waffle slab will be very highly stiff and rigid in nature and mostly the thickness of this waffle slab will be between 14 to 20 inches. So, when we provide a waffle slab here, the soil, this will be the slab resting on the soil say for example, if the soil undergoes any kind of swelling, that swelling will be take place within this waffle zone or the void zone that means at this zone. So, therefore, the impact of the swelling will be less on the footing. The rib supports the structure while the waffle voids allow the soil to expand. So, this ribs takes the structure load whereas, this waffle zone provide or allow soil to expand within this zone. So, this is known as waffle zone and this is generally provided at a on the ground surface or maybe just few feet below the ground surface. The other method of controlling the swelling in an expansive soil is moisture control. As the moisture is a main culprit or main force driving the soil or main reason behind the expansiveness of the soil, if we can restrict the movement of the moisture below this foundation level, so that there will be no change in the water content. So, therefore, there will be no heaving or shrinkage of the soil. So, this moisture control can be carried out using moisture barrier wall. This moisture barrier wall can be provided in two way, one is a vertical wall and second one is a horizontal moisture barrier wall. This is the vertical wall and this is a horizontal moisture barrier wall. This horizontal moisture barrier wall is mostly made of a membrane. Maybe we can use geomembrane. which will be made of SDPE and a vertical moisture barrier can also be provided. So, maybe the, we can provide this one with a concrete wall. This to the vertical barrier wall and the horizontal barrier wall will prevent the migration of the water from the outside to the soil present below the foundation level. In this case, we can see this is a foundation level. Here a trench has been digged and then this is filled with clay and sand and gravel and a perforated PVC pipe is there. A geomembrane has been provided as a vertical barrier wall over here. Since the geomembrane is impermeable to water, the migration of the water cannot take place beyond this portion. So, this is also one form of the vertical barrier wall. We can also control the moisture by providing subsurface drainage. So, here we can see this is a foundation located very close to a stream. So, if there is an increase of the water then again the soil 
on this zone will get affected. So, to reduce the ingress of the water, we need to provide a subsurface drainage. So, water can come here and it can be extracted. So, this sub drain is provided to intercept the gravitational free water and then it can be removed. So, the sur purpose of subsurface drainage is to intercept the gravity flow of water, lower the ground water level and arrest the capillary moisture movement. This can also be provided in the form of a perimeter drainage wall like if this is a foundation we can provide a drainage wall all around this foundation. So, this can be provided in many way like uh, this is a cut up wall or maybe you can provide a perimeter wall. This is all about the controlling the swelling behavior of the soil. Again there is another factor we need to remember that the evapotranspiration of water from the soil produces the shrinkage behavior. Say for example, if a house is located very close to a tree, then the root of the tree can absorb moisture from the soil beneath this foundation. As the water gets absorbed, the soil will shrink, therefore there will be settlement. So, therefore, we need to avoid any kind of accumulation of the water or any kind of movement of the tree roots below the foundation. And also we need to be sure that big trees should be located far distance from the structure. As a thumb rule, if the total height of a tree is h, then it should be located at least a distance h from the edge of this footing. So, that the effect of root on the evapotranspiration or the effect of the root on absorbing moisture of the soil present below this footing will be minimal. So, we need to be ensured that any big tree if lying very close to the foundation, it should be at least at a distance of h where h is the height of the tree. So, this is to reduce the evapotranspiration below the soil present in a footing. So, these are the different uh, references uh, which has been used to prepare this lecture and thank you.